Good day, dear students. Today I am going to talk about baroreceptors, which are involved in the short-term regulation of blood pressure. Short-term means within seconds to minutes. This is competency 5.8 within the framework of the MCI. 5 relates to cardiovascular physiology and this is the 8 competency. That is, describe the factors affecting heart rate and regulation of cardiac output and blood pressure. So at the end of this lecture, you should be able to explain the organization of the sympathetic vasoconstrictor system. Sympathetic vasoconstrictor system plays a key role in the functioning of the baroreceptors. Describe the baroreceptor reflex arc and explain the role of the baroreceptors in the regulation of blood pressure. The sympathetic vasoconstrictor system consists of a three neuron pathway. So it emerges from the rostral medulla and projects to the intermediolateral horn cells of the spinal cord. From where the sympathetic nervous system arises, it projects to the sympathetic ganglion. And from there, the sympathetic fibers arise, which project to the heart, the blood vessels, the adrenal medulla, and the sweat glands. The baroreceptors are located in the carotid sinus. A small dilation at the bifurcation of the, of the common carotid artery and in the arch of aorta. This is the arch of aorta. This is the carotid sinus. So you can see this is the carotid sinus, a small dilation at the bifurcation of the common carotid artery. And this is the arch of our tongue. Both these baroreceptors are located close to the heart. From the carotid sinus, uh, the ninth nerve emerges, a branch of the ninth nerve called the carotid sinus nerve. And from the aortic arch, the vagus nerve emerges. And both these nerves project to the medulla. Depending on whether the blood pressure is increased or decreased, they signal to the sympathetic nervous system then to reset it back towards normal. So when the blood pressure is increased, the baroreceptors send a signal to the vasomotor center. That is, within the medulla, they send a signal to the nucleus tractus solitarius. And then this nucleus interprets the increase in blood pressure. Its function is to then inhibit the sympathetic output through the rostral ventrolateral medulla. And then it decreases the blood pressure. When the blood pressure decreases, the baroreceptors send a signal to the nucleus tractus solitarius. Telling it that now the blood pressure has decreased. So nucleus tractus solitarius stimulates the rostral medulla and it stimulates the sympathetic nervous system and brings the blood pressure back towards normal. When one stands from a sitting position, the blood pressure decreases because there is pulling of blood in the lower limbs. So the baroreceptor Firing occurs and that is, there is decreased efferent impulses in the ninth and 10th cranial nerve, which reaches the nucleus tractus solitarius. Now the nucleus tractus solitarius has learned that the blood pressure has decreased. So it stimulates the rostral medulla and they, which in turn stimulates the sympathetic nervous system which restores the blood pressure back towards normal. So taking this situation when one rises from a sitting position there is decrease in blood pressure so there is decreased stretch on the baroreceptors. The decreased stretch on the baroreceptors decreases the firing rate of the carotid sinus nerve and the aortic nerve which increases sympathetic activity to the heart and blood vessels 
increasing heart rate, increasing myocardial contractility, and increasing venous return. In addition, it decreases the parasympathetic activity to the heart, so the heart rate increases, and that restores the blood pressure back towards normal. So this is what happens when one rises from a sitting position. The blood pressure is increased by increasing the heart rate, increasing the force of contraction of the heart, which increases the stroke volume. And together with increased heart rate and increased stroke volume, there is increase in the cardiac output. You all know that blood pressure is a product of cardiac output into total peripheral resistance. In addition, there is vasoconstriction. Also, there is venoconstriction, which increases the venous return to the heart. And there is increased release of adrenaline from the adrenal medulla. We have seen a situation where on rising from a sitting position, the blood pressure decreases. Now, what would happen if the blood pressure increases? The opposite sequence of events would happen. That is, impulses are sent to the nucleus tractus solitarius, which inhibits the rostral ventrolateral medulla, which inhibits the sympathetic output and then restores the blood pressure back towards normal. So to sum up, the baroreceptor is the first and foremost reflex for the regulation of blood pressure. It operates within seconds. So it can be life-saving in day-to-day -day conditions such as rising from a sitting position and in conditions such as loss of large amount of blood such as hemorrhage. It operates within a physiological range. That is, it maintains blood pressure within a physiologic range of 70 to 180 millimeters of mercury. The baroreceptors reset in chronic hypertension. That is, if the blood pressure is elevated for a long time and the person is hypertensive, then the baroreceptor resets at a higher level. Baroreceptor reflex is the first and foremost reflex in the short term regulation of blood pressure. It, it operates within a physiologic range of 70 to 180 millimeters of mercury. When blood pressure falls via the nucleus tractus solitarius, rostral medulla, sympathetic nervous system pathway, the blood pressure returns to normal. And finally, baroreceptor resetting occurs in chronic hypertension. Thank you and have a good day.